not that place of shame and fear and pride and drivenness and all that it has become. So that's why we're spending some time on it. And it seems like somehow I end up with the practical part. <laughs> so tonight we're going to get practical and start designing. What, how, how do I actually do this? Uh, so, so let's bring ourselves back into that stream of understanding that God has been developing for us. So just a simple way to think, what's something really standing out to you? about assessment and are going to give you about a minute to think about that what what is it that so far is just really hitting your heart bringing new revelation to your mind okay so when you've got that you know what that is give, give me a thumbs up or if you know how to use the little icon put a little um, hand up in your corner so i know when everybody's had time to think Good evening, ladies. It's just to you. Okay, have you had time to identify one thing that's kind of standing out to you about assessment so far? Put your hand up, put your thumb up, do, do something, let me know. Aha, Natalie, thumbs up. Okay, I don't see too much response. I will count down from 10. And then you're going to have to have your idea. <laughs> okay, okay, here's my leak. Okay, seven, six, Gabriel, five, Miriam, three, two, one. Okay, now we're going to do that, that thing where we get both sides of the brain involved. Now I'm going to ask you to find an object that represents that, what you've been thinking about, what is your learning about assessment, okay? So walk around your house, get that object, and bring it back with you, okay? So you got about 20 seconds. Go find that thing and bring it back, and then you're going to have a chance to talk about it with a partner. Ah, uh, there's Natalia's face, always smiling. <laughs> okay, looks like just about everybody's back. Okay, Carlina, can you put us into pairs? Yes. Trusting that we'll figure out the Spanish and Portuguese and make it work. Yes. I figured out the, the languages, so I think we're mm. good. So for how long, Lisa? Um, two minutes. Two quick, minutes? Quick. Okay. Well, maybe three, because it takes a little while to get to the rooms and whatnot. Okay, okay. So let me change here. See you in three minutes, okay? Okay. Bye. -bye.
Welcome back. Anyone just so excited about what they shared that they feel the need to share it again? We can take time for a couple of people if you're just really excited about something. All right, you had your had your fill with one another. That's a good thing. Okay, well, we had a lot of really good um, input. And right at the end, we had a couple of rich sources of things to ponder, didn't we? Uh, we looked at the scriptures and, and talked about that. And then we looked at Jesus. And there's always something so rich about looking at how he does things. And so those passages in Revelation, I've looked at those, thought about them, prayed about them a number of times. And then we had that cute little skit with them, with our friends. So let's do a little bit of thinking about those things as a way to kind of bring us into what we've been learning. Okay. And so we have started working with that chart that is helping us to see the difference between the way assessment has been in our experience, in our cultures, our modern day educational system, which we're all part of, and how that contrasts with what we see are the biblical um, purposes and means of assessment okay so we're gonna work on the same chart that we've been working on um so let's have a look at that do we have a chance to put that up on uh on the screen or should i put mine up i think you can just share let me just check okay so i should just screen share this yeah okay you just think so I want you to think about let's start with your reflections from revelations. What did you see about how Jesus does assessment? Wasn't that interesting to think? Wow, he totally does assessment. Uh okay, screen share now like this the whole screen. Okay, so here's our chart now. So let, let's hear from, um, we'll start with group number six. And why don't you share one or two things from your group that you noticed as you were looking at um, Jesus and how he was doing assessment with those churches in Revelation. I don't, I don't know who to call on other than group six. Sim, te ouvimos. Pode falar. Desculpa, gente, não ouvi a pergunta. É sobre Apocalipse hoje de manhã, Ju. Para compartilhar? Desculpa. No, no meu grupo, a gente colocou sobre uma maneira que, de, que, Je, que Jesus estava avaliando, é que ele estava avaliando a, a, o resultado, as obras da igreja. Isso foi uma coisa que a gente colocou. Eu não sei se é essa a pergunta. Uh -huh. So he was evaluating their actions. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uhum. Uhum. E aí ele estava avaliando a outra pergunta, né? Por que, que ele estava avaliando? Ele estava avaliando porque tinha tinha algumas coisas que precisavam ser ajustadas, né? Então ele queria que eles voltassem a, a uhum. voltassem antes da queda, né? Voltassem para para o caminho correto. Uhum. Ok. So restore them to the right path. So that was his intention, wasn't it? So he was addressing actions and 
and bringing that that word that would restore them to how they were supposed to be walking. That was his purpose, wasn't it? Great. Wonderful. Okay. Good. So group five, what would you add to that? What did you notice? There we go, a little bigger. Okay, what did you notice, group five? Uh, sorry, Lisa, I don't know which is my group. I think it was five, but we were confused because today my group disappeared and I oh. finished in another group. So I don't know if group Five was my group. No worries. So we were with Michelle and Michelle. Well, well, why don't you go ahead and share, Natalia? Thank you for speaking up and helping us understand. What are Mi some things you remember from your group discussion? Michelle had Michelle wheelchair. She has the oh, okay, okay. notes. Michelle, quer que eu te tire do canal para compartilhar? E aí a Miriam talvez possa ajudar traduzindo na sala principal mesmo. Deixa eu só tirar a Michelle aqui, só um minuto. Pode falar, Michelle. Ok, so we talked about um, that Jesus was evaluating them on their actions, on their works. And on the, their patience and love, but in how they demonstrated uh, uh, patience, but in how they demonstrated those. So it was still observable. Uh, and the reason why the reason why is uh, for repentance, so they could be, so they could be restored uh, to communion, fellowship with God again. Good. Great, thank you, Michelle. Do you remember what group number you were? I was three, but Natalia three. was a different number, but then I was alone okay. and she was alone, so we merged. So it may be that Perfect. you don't have a three or a five. You might okay. go four, four. two, and okay. one. Okay. Hoje de manhã, a gente juntaram três com cinco, os dois grupos. Good. So let's try four. Is there a four out there? É o grupo do Ulisses, o quatro. Okay. Yes. And if you can put me back in the channel, please, Carlinha. Sorry, I put you there. It's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Grupo 4. Uli, tem alguém para compartilhar uhum. no seu grupo? Uhum. I don't know. I can hear you. Ah, o Uli está compartilhando, gente. Deixa eu tirar ele do canal só um minutinho. E aí a gente consegue ouvi-lo. Uli, só um minutinho. Me desculpa. Daniel, se você puder traduzir na sala principal. Obrigada. Ok. Pode falar, Uli, perdão. Ah, outra vez. Ok. 
do you hear me? Everyone mm -hmm. do, hear me? Listen to me? Okay. So what we were talking about is that Jesus, uh, he was evaluating their actions and the works, yes, but not just the external, but also the internal, because they he he was uh, eval evaluating their their passion, um, their because they were doing and not as they were starting because they lost the first love. Uli, espera, traduzco. Okay. Mm -hmm. Entonces ellos están compartiendo que. Jesús evaluó no solo sus acciones, eh, pero también eh, lo interno de ellos, como su pasión, su amor hacia él. So, no evaluó solo cosas externas, pero lo interno. Uh -huh. Ajá, yes, uh, he was he was evaluating the way, uh, also uh, because yeah they lost their passion, so they they were doing no not as they were start how they started. Mm. Mm. Ellos no estaban mm -hmm. eh, caminando de la misma forma a como lo estaban haciendo al principio. Ajá. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's it. Good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Is there a group two? Él era el grupo cuatro ahora. Yes, he was four. We need to go for two. Grupo dos ahora, gente. É, Carlinha, eu tava no eu sou do grupo 2, mas hoje pela manhã não consegui participar, não sei quem, a Gabriela é do nosso grupo, só que ela tava de manhã e só que não ficou, então não sei quem é que estava do grupo 2, a Cláudia também não estava, uh, e acredito que o Jonathan, eu acho que ele também não tava, então não sei quem do grupo 2. Ok, thank you for explaining that, Laís. Anybody from group one then? Eu posso compartilhar. É... A okay. gente conversou um pouco parecido com o que já falaram, né? É... Dos... Dos seis grupos, já compartilharam. Mas algo que ficou evidente também para a gente é que ele descreve é... onde eles acertaram, né? Ele deixa tanto claro o que eles fizeram de certo nice. e o que eles fizeram de... O, por onde eles estavam caminhando errado. É a, interessante também que a gente observou que ele repete duas vezes o que eles acertaram. E aí convidou tanto para o que que é, qual seria a consequência de permanecer no errado, mas também para qual seria a consequência de é, voltar ao primeiro amor. Acho que é isso. Yes, such good insight, everybody. If you all had different um, different passages from the scripture that were talking to different churches, but if you read the, all seven of them, they're all the same. The pattern is so clear. And what Miley just pointed out for us is he starts off and he said, I see, I know. And so there was an honoring, wasn't there? He didn't start right in with, okay, I'm so annoyed. Here's everything you're doing wrong. And so often assessment in our minds is about being criticized and all the things that we're doing wrong whether it's how many we got wrong on a test or having an interview with our leader, we often have that feeling of, uh-oh, <laughs> what, what did I do wrong? I, I'm going to get ready. I'm going to have a good attitude. <laughs> and, and we see the pattern that the first thing he did was say, I know. I've been watching. I understand. Okay. And he, he talked about what they did well. And he also helped them to know that he was very aware of what they were struggling against. I said, I know how hard this is. I know the persecution. I know the temptation. And so there was a context of relationship that was so 
rich and think of how you would feel, how they must have felt when the first thing out of the mouth of the person who's evaluating you is, you have done so well. I've been watching. I know it's been really hard. I think Melinda and Anna brought that out, didn't they? Is starting with that acknowledgement and that encouragement of I've seen what you've done well and I see how hard you're trying and how life-giving that is for us, isn't it? And so as you guys pointed out, then one of the things I think it's helpful for us to notice is he doesn't say things like, you're lazy. He says, you're doing this. You're not doing this. And he's very specific, isn't he? You're not left wondering, I wonder what he thinks. <laughs> I wonder what I should change. It's very clear. And, and it's not a clarity of shame pointing out exactly what you did wrong, but it's, it's instruction. It's clarity. There's a relief of, like, oh, okay. I know what you want. I know where I've gotten off the track. I know where there's room for me to grow. And so if you notice, he's very clear. It's very specific, isn't it? Did you guys notice that too? Yeah. And, uh, and, and so there was clear actions and there was the pattern of character saying, I've seen over time the choices that you've made, which really is how we define character. If, if I see you speak sharply one time, it's not fair for me to say, you have a bad temper. Like, I, can, I don't know that. It, if I see you consistently speaking harshly to other people, then I can say, aha, this is a, the current level of your character in this area because it's a consistent pattern. And so that's part of assessment is understanding for ourselves through observation and through questions. And that was something that Melinda modeled for us this morning is instead of saying, you're lazy, you're not paying attention. She said, so tell me how you're doing this week. Normally, you're quite attentive in, in prayer meeting, quite involved. And today you're quiet. How are you? So she didn't presume and accuse, I know, you're lazy, you don't care. She said, let, let me reflect to you what I saw today and let me learn from you what you're thinking, what, why you did what you did. Okay. So we see Jesus doing that as well, not making accusations, but reflecting back to them. Here's what I've seen over time. Okay. Good. Um, and then the other thing that uh, you guys pointed out was why was he doing this? And, and everybody identified, well, because he wanted them to change. He wanted them to come back. He wanted them to move forward. And, and so we see him modeling the point of assessment isn't shame and discouragement. The point of assessment is encouragement and strength. Okay, it's also instruction. So you, you can have clarity now that you didn't have before. You understand where you've gotten off track, why, and you understand how to get back, how to move forward. So there's instruction, there's encouragement, and it should strengthen our understanding and our commitment and our motivation. So we see Jesus modeling all of these things. And then finally, um, what Miley brought out was that he helped them understand the value of what he was saying to them. He's saying, and here's 
here's why this is important because look at where these choices are going to take you. So it's not just you, you irritate me. So I'm going to correct you. It's like, this is for your good. Look at where this is going long term. And understanding the fruit and the long term consequences of our choices, that's part of instruction and part of motivation, isn't it? And so he wasn't doing it for his sake. You're embarrassing me. You're annoying me. You make me mad. <laughs> it was, I, I'm concerned for your well being. Here's what you need to know. Here's the change of heart that I want to help you consider and choose for your good. Isn't that right? Did we see that in those scriptures? Okay. So, so always, you know, Jesus' example for us is always so rich. Um, thanks for taking off my screen share. What do you think? Is there anything else you were noticing from the skit that Melinda and Anna, and Anna sorry, that's how she says it, Melinda and Anna, how they, uh, what they portrayed, what they showed us in their skit? Is there anything else that we should add to this understanding of what assessment is all about? Any other thoughts about that? What did you notice them doing? Did they did they do these things? Adding to our chart, asking questions for understanding versus assuming, assuming that we know. Okay, yeah, Miriam had some nice observation that her way of assessing increased Anna's motivation. Anna wasn't trying to hide and run away and hope that she didn't get caught next time. There was a drawing out of, oh, I want to move forward. Think about how did Melinda do that, that it had that effect on Anna? This I'm going to write into our chart. The fruit of this assessment method is motivation to do better, to, to grow. Okay. What else did you notice? You can go ahead and unmute yourselves and just talk. What else did you notice from the skip? Anything else come to mind? Maybe you got something to share? É, eu estava pensando, <risos> só um minuto, eu estava pensando exatamente sobre o exemplo, enquanto eu falava é, sobre o que a gente estava conversando sobre Apocalipse, né? É que a Melinda fez todo o caminho de reforçar quem ela era, reforçar como percebia sobre é, como ela agia na intercessão e como ela trazia palavras, né? E isso mostra para a pessoa que ela está sendo percebida. Uhum. Né? E, e aí pontuou, ó, te percebi distante, então apontou para o que supostamente é, não estava é, normal naquela semana, né? É, que aí vai para o que a Miriam falou, é, fez com que ela, é, primeiro, se percebesse amada e vista, e aí é, pensar assim, como eu posso reagir diferente na, nas próximas intercessões e ações, né? Fiquei pensando sobre isso, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, you guys. So, so I think we, we saw some consistency between Jesus' example and what Melinda and Melissa did in the skit, which, of course, is a good thing because they're applying those same values and purposes and principles 
that we see Jesus modeling for us. So the fruit of this approach to assessment is what we have observed in the churches and in Anna's response, Anna's response. When we do assessment right, it provokes that desire to change, doesn't it? There's, I understand now, I understand where what's wrong and I understand how I can change. So there's a mental shift of clarity. There's an emotional, I, I feel cared for. And there's that response of, and I want, I'm leaning forward. I want to change. I want to grow. So we taking time because that's not normally been our experience and to really reflect deeply what what can it be like what's it supposed to be like and so the contrast between our experience and what the lord intends we, we want to take a good look at that because it's not something that we're familiar with so i want you i want you now to go and I asked you to bring a mirror to class. So it might be a mirror that you hold in your hand, it might be your phone, you know, some of our phones, if you put the, put the photo on and switch it around, it almost acts like a mirror. Do, do you all have your mirror? Does everybody have a mirror they can look in? Okay, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna start counting. I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to look in your mirror. Okay, ready? Go. Okay. So as you looked in the mirror, what, what did you do? Natalia, what did you do as you looked in the mirror? I was still looking. <laughs> I was looking all the imperfections or things I need to take out. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was also looking my my face and my eyes <laughs> and I was seeing oh this beautiful face but I have so many insecurities I would like to take out to see <laughs> yeah. more I don't know I was thinking on that and then mm -hmm. I, I see something here and I was trying to take it out <laughs> <laughs> okay very honest okay good thank you for that how about you um let's see I haven't heard from Louisa. What what did you do when you had your mirror? Hola. Hola. Eh, el espejito que yo tengo es un espejito de maquillaje de ojos. Así que cuando lo tengo, pues me maquillo mis ojos. <risa> y ya. So when you looked in the mirror, what, what did you do? Hola. Eh, pues observo mis facciones, eh, miro los, los colores que me favorecen en el momento que necesito para el maquillaje y trato de, de pues veo mi, mi, mi rostro, mi silueta, mi color, mi tez, eh, no sé qué más responder. <risa> ok, so... When I was watching you and, and now listening to you, when we look in the mirror, we there's we want to see what we look like, right? 
And there's a combination of noticing nice things about us. But what we really look for is, you know, what, <laughs> is there something in my teeth, right? We're looking for what do I want to change? Now that I see myself clearly, is there anything I want to change? And if you have the salad for lunch and you have the, the lettuce in your teeth, you don't look and go, oh, I have lettuce in my teeth and just go on. You go, oh, <laughs> I have lettuce in my teeth. Why didn't someone tell me? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, take it out quick. <laughs> okay. And and so a mirror is an opportunity for self-assessment. And it's a picture for us. Assessment lets me see what do I look like? What would I what do I appreciate? What's good? And what would I like to change now that I see myself clearly? Isn't that right? So it's a simple, simple little thing that I hope you'll remember. And James actually talks to us about this in the scriptures, doesn't he? He says, he says, don't, don't be foolish. Only a foolish person looks in the mirror and walks away without changing. And so he's encouraging us to develop habits of self-reflection. And that's in quiet time and saying, Lord, is there anything that you want to talk to me about? Anything that I can change? Receiving assessment from others, just saying, yes, I, I want to know because I'd like to change. Okay. So it, it's an attitude toward reflection and assessment that we want to have in our own hearts. We don't run away and hide in shame. Okay, and I appreciated what Natalie and Louisa said. They said, oh, I'm looking at my face and I see good things there. And that was the first thing was, yeah, I, I, I see I have pretty eyes. Well, yes, you do. And that's just as true as the fact that maybe there's something on your skin you're not happy about at the moment. It's all true. And so learning to embrace that and welcome it for ourselves Okay, that's the first place, being teachable, welcoming assessment ourselves, having a lifestyle of taking time to reflect and to ask God. That prepares us to be wise and loving, using that hammer the right way, okay, so that we're ready to assess others the same way we want to be assessed. Don't embarrass me. Don't hurt my feelings. Don't accuse me instead of finding out why I do what I do. Notice how hard I've tried and how far I've come. Those are all things that we value, that make us trust someone to speak into our lives, welcome it, in fact. And so that mirror of reflection and saying what what helps you receive assessment find assessment to be something healthy and productive that helps you reflect and go oh i can learn from that i know what that's like i can be like that too okay so so we want to think about how we do assessment in a way that builds up that bears the kind of fruit that the Lord wants us to have. Any, any comments, anything you'd like to say at this point? I have my chat window up, so I'm not sure if anybody's seeing stuff. Anything you wanna comment on? Yeah, that's right, Ulysses. When we do evaluation well, it bears good fruit. It's like pruning, isn't it? Why do you prune a tree? Is anybody a gardener? Why, why do you prune a tree? Anybody? 
Any thoughts? Yeah. So it bears more fruit. You don't prune a tree to kill it. <laughs> you say, this is a good tree with good fruit. How can I get rid of things that are hindering its growth so that it's more productive and it's more fruitful? I'm not trying to kill it. I'm trying to help it thrive. So all of these different images, we want to take deeply into our hearts and into our minds so that we come to assessment with a biblical perspective. And it's easier for us to understand and develop our own creative approaches to assessing the people that are in the particular type of training that we are responsible for. Okay, so these lessons are about life and they're about leadership in general, but we're gathered here now because we are University of Nations training leaders. So we want to bring all of this good stuff that's for everybody, every leader, every Christian, and we want to think now about okay, how do I do this in this role where I am responsible to train men and women have a vision and a calling for a particular area, a particular skill set that they want to use to impact one of the spheres of society. So we're going to talk now about the practical aspect of how we've talked about how do I do assessment in terms of relating to the other person. Now we're going to talk about how do I create those tools that help me to assess or measure how someone is growing, okay? So we've talked about traditional assessment tends to be is almost always quite limited, focusing on just, do you remember? Can you repeat? So focused on knowledge. And often it is only measured by a written exam. And we've talked about why that's not very helpful. Some things are best demonstrated. Uh, talked about all the different outcomes. How do I know what your character is? Do I know because you can write a, write a nice essay about patience? Does that tell me what your character is? No. That tells me your understanding of the word patience doesn't tell me how you personally are living it out. So having the right tool to, to do the right work is important. Remember we talked about we want to have a, a vegetable for a snack, we want to have a carrot for a snack. You, you can't cut up a carrot with a knife or a spoon. It, you have to have the right tool. The knife is the right tool for that job. And so asking ourselves, what are the tools that I need to assess these different outcomes? So that's one of the things we have to be aware of. We measure what we value, don't we? And so if we value growing in character, then we want to have a goal, a specific clear outcome for growth in that area. And then we want to have a plan to measure our progress toward that goal. If we're trying to train and equip someone with skills, how to dig a well, how to preach the gospel, whatever, how to dress a bandage, how to design a brochure, okay? we have to have a very clear outcome. I want you to be able to do this, and here's how we'll know that you've mastered that skill. So you have to have a plan to train them. You have to have a you have to have a goal to reach, a plan for how you're going to train, and you are prepared with how are you going to know how they are, are progressing, how they are moving toward that goal. Okay? So assessment isn't something different. It's not at the end of all your learning. We're going to give you a test. Okay, it's not 
apart from the learning process. It's right there in the middle of it. Okay, it helps all of us to keep learning. If if I talked for an hour without stopping, I would have no way of knowing if you had learned anything. And that's not very helpful. So stopping and saying, well, why don't you go discuss it? And let me ask a question. And why don't you fill in a chart together in your small group? Okay, that's giving you a chance to think about what you're learning, to continue your learning as you discuss with each other, and then to see for yourself, what, what am I learning? Can I fill in all the parts of the chart? I have a chance to observe your learning. To let me see what your groups came up with. Now I can see what you're learning. You can see what you're learning, and we're all able to keep choosing to learn together. You can say, oh, I thought I understood that, but I didn't. I really couldn't apply that. I need to know, oh, I thought everybody understood that, but I, I see that they didn't. I need to change what I'm doing. They, so it helps you make different choices. I need to ask a question. I need to pay closer attention. I need to ask for help. I need to look at my notes. I need to message my friend and ask her what this means. Okay. So you have information for yourself and, and I have information that helps me as a servant leader to change what I'm doing to better serve you as the learners that I'm working with. So assessment is part of your lesson planning. It's part of how you think about what are they going to learn? How am I going to help them learn it? Okay. How am I going to introduce new learning? How are they going to practice what they're learning? How are we going to keep track of their learning, the way they are progressing toward the goals? Okay. So. This is one of the really important points for assessment is why we do it is to encourage and strengthen. And, and if that's true, then we have to do it along the way. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Can I just add one thing? Hmm? Uma coisa para mim que é muito importante é nós pensarmos que avaliação não é apenas para nota. Eu tive uma experiência na escola, no meu ensino médio, yep. e a minha escola a gente tinha uma semana de provas marcadas, que a gente sabia que iam ser, ia ser avaliado e dar nota, e a gente se preparava para isso, mas muitas vezes nós fazíamos exercícios durante mm -hmm. as outras semanas só para ver onde a gente estava. Né? Então, muitas vezes a gente pensa, não, eu vou fazer uma avaliação para dar uma nota. Mas a avaliação é esse espelho que a Lisa estava falando. Hum. Então, porque eu conheço um pouquinho da nossa cultura, eu queria só chamar um pouco a nossa atenção para isso. A avaliação, algumas vezes, não vai ser para nota, mas vai ser para eu realizar onde eu estou, onde os alunos estão e como é que eu faço para avançar e trazer mais aprendizado e provocar perguntas e crescimento. E a gente tem que ter isso em mente. A avaliação ela serve para que hum. eu ajude a pessoa a ir mais longe. E muitas vezes a nota, ela não traz isso. Em outros momentos, sim, vai ter uma nota, né? Vocês assistiram o vídeo da Landa hoje. A gente vai ser honesto no que a gente está propondo. Mas a gente tem que ter isso em mente, né? Obrigada, Lisa. <risos> yeah, yeah. That's exactly what we're talking about. Is really why we're going deeper. And we're looking at it with different pictures and scriptures and you know, so many things because it's so deep in our minds, our emotions, our spirits, isn't it? We have a whole lifetime in one stream of the way culture does things and whatnot. And so I recognizing where we are how we think, how we feel, 
what we're used to doing. That is part of that change, just like Jesus. We're assessing ourselves, saying, oh, huh, I, I do think that. I have felt that way. Oh, now I have a new, a new way to evaluate how I think, how I feel, how I do things, why I do things. And, and it's a big shift, which is why we're looking at it from lots of different. So uh, it, your culture is not alone. Most of the world functions this way. I, I'll tell you a story, though. Uh, working with children, I'm not a trained teacher. And I got involved in education simply because I had children who were school age. And I was on a YWAM base. And we had a cooperative school. The families worked together and uh, the parents all, you know, were teachers of the children were in classroom. And one of my friends is on YWAM basis, people from all different countries. And she happened to be from New Zealand. And she said, you know, in the United States, my child is coming home from the first, uh, we call it kindergarten five years old, very young child, their first experience with school. And all his little papers have grades on them. She said, in New Zealand, we don't give children grades until they're 12 or 13 years old. I said, what? How do they learn? She said, you see, that's the problem. In, in your mindset and in, in your culture, the only point of learning is to achieve something, is to get a grade. In New Zealand, learning is a joyful process of discovery. What you're learning has value and meaning. The process of learning is exciting and rewarding. And so children like to learn. And if they don't understand something, they want to. We don't, we don't need to use grades and the threat of bad grades or the bribe of a good grade to motivate them. <laughs> wow, that was quite a surprise to me because I didn't know. I'd grown up in one culture, in one experience. And it really taught me a lot. So if your culture is like mine, all we know is I either feel good and I'm striving after a high grade or I feel bad because I feel helpless to get a good grade. And neither one of those bears biblical fruit. Neither one of those bears the fruit of I'm growing, I'm changing. My character is becoming more godly. I have more skills to serve with greater excellence. My mind has more understanding, so I am wiser and I am able to contribute. That is biblical fruitfulness. And that stands in very stark contrast to, I want to be noticed and recognized, or I want to hide so I'm not ashamed which is very often the fruit of our traditional approach to education. They say traditional because it is practiced in Christian schools, isn't it? So just because we do something a certain way in a Christian school doesn't make it Christian. We have to rethink, is this rooted in biblical truth, biblical values? Am I seeing biblical fruit? And you can do that in a secular school, following God's principles and values. And you can have a very secular mindset in a Christian school. So that's why we have to rethink these things so deeply. Convince ourselves. Look at the scriptures. Not what does culture do and what's been my experience. What do we see in the scriptures? This is quite important, isn't it? Because this mindset of assessment, where am I going and why am I trying so hard to get there? 
that's really what drives our lives, drives education. We've got to disengage, we've got to change from that. Consciously recognize that part isn't biblical. This is where I need to change and how I need to change. Are you finding this helpful? No? Okay, I see, I see lives. Okay. Right. There, there's, there's other things to discuss, but I have just felt Holy Spirit saying, just, just pause, just give a minute here. Spend a little more time on this, which I'm, I'm happy to do if it's helpful. Um, so, yeah, let's just take a minute. Let's just be, okay? Let's give you a little moment to reflect, respond, whatever you want to use that minute for, okay? Uh, I've got to say that as I sit here quietly, there's a tremendous sadness coming. And I'm not sure why, but it feels like there's a lot of pain around this for at least one of you, if not more. And um, I just feel a deep sense of sorrow, sadness. I just get the sense right now that it's um, that the Lord. It, it's like there's a there's a wound on your on your body, and and the skin healed over, but it it wasn't healthy underneath. That there was some infection left, you know, some bacteria left, and and so underneath it's still it's still sore. It's not healthy. It's painful and nobody can touch it and and it spreads illness and weakness through your body and and when that happens you have to cut it open and you and you have to get, let the infection drain out you have to pour the antiseptic in there and and i just have a sense that for at least one of you and it's worth it if it's just for one of you that there's something, there's some, some wound there that never really had a chance to heal properly. And the Lord is opening that back up and saying, that's, that's not the end of the story. That's not the highest for you. I, I want to do some more cleansing and restoring this area. But we just want to take uh, take a few moments and just bring our souls before you. And we have lived in this world, and and the world has uh, not treated us the way you wanted us to be treated. The world has revolved around shame, competition, and pride, and and it's left the wounds in our souls and we just want to come before you jesus now we want to open those things up to you we want to ask for that cleansing power of your word and your holy spirit blood of jesus to set us free from years of thinking of ourselves as stupid Years of being ashamed about our intellect or academic skills. Years of, of sadness over the way we have come to see ourselves. 
we just invite you, Jesus, to bring that next level of restoration. That we can look in a mirror and see the beauty. Smile at ourselves. Look in the mirror with confidence that we're growing, that we're changing. That God has given us all that we need to fulfill our calling. Lord, we just ask for that healing and that restoration now. Take us deeper, Lord, that as we turn now and serve our brothers and sisters through assessment in their learning process, we can do so from our own place of wholeness and joy, peace, and confidence. Not in ourselves, but in you. That you are working with us in this same joyful process. And we can invite others, follow me as I'm following Jesus. Bless my friends, Jesus. Take these truths so deeply into our spirits, as deep as deep as the wound is, be as deep as the healing is. In the name of Jesus, amen. Deus, eu quero orar também para que o Senhor traga a revelação de que o Senhor é suficiente. Eu entendo e compartilho desse sentimento Amém. de tristeza do coração da Lisa. E o que vem na minha mente é que tem mentiras que dizem que mesmo que o Senhor esteja chamando alguns de nós para alguns passos, nós não achamos que nós damos conta. Parece grande demais, parece sério demais, parece que vai custar demais, e a gente falhou em outras coisas antes. Mas eu quero pedir em nome de Jesus que o Senhor venha renovar a alegria da salvação sobre cada um dos meus irmãos, irmãos e das minhas irmãs. Eu oro que o capacete da salvação venha proteger a mente de cada um deles. E eu oro que haja esperança nos nossos corações de que o Senhor é aquele que faz mais do que nós conseguimos prever. Eu quero orar em nome de Jesus lembrando que aqueles que o Senhor chama, o Senhor capacita. O Senhor é conosco, o Senhor é Emanuel. E eu oro que nesse processo de nós aprendermos mais, de nós assumirmos mais responsabilidade, de nós revermos a maneira que nós lideramos escolas, avaliamos alunos, construímos a Universidade das Nações, que a gente se lembre disso. O Senhor é Emanuel, o Senhor é Deus conosco, o Senhor é suficiente, o Senhor é aquele que não dorme, o Senhor é aquele que não se esquece de cada um de nós. Então, eu quero pedir por um sopro de esperança sobre cada um dos meus irmãos e das minhas irmãs. Eu oro que eles sejam renovados no sim que eles têm dado para o Senhor. Eu oro que eles entendam que é o Senhor chamando, é o Senhor dizendo para eles que eles podem, é o Senhor trazendo revelação naquilo que eles não sabem, é o Senhor trazendo criatividade, é o Senhor trazendo cura, Deus. E eu oro, Deus, que eles sejam um lugar de passagem para outros. Eu oro que conforme eles são curados, eles ofereçam cura para outras pessoas. Conforme eles têm esperança renovada, eles tragam esperança por onde eles passarem. E a tua palavra diz que o teu reino é justiça, paz e alegria no Espírito Santo. Eu oro que as nossas relações com as escolas que a gente trabalha, com os treinamentos que a gente está envolvido, sejam baseados em justiça, paz e alegria no Espírito Santo. E que isso venha gerar vida e vida em abundância, Pai. Em nome de Jesus. E eu oro, Espírito Santo, fala conosco nessa noite. São coisas pequenas, às vezes, que ficam no caminho. Não deixa a gente se paralisar. Não deixa a gente paralisar por essas pequenas coisas. Mas traz revelação, Senhor. Em nome de Jesus. I don't expect anyone to pray, but I don't want you to miss a chance if there's something you would like to pray. So just give another moment if anyone would like to pray anything else. Deus, eu quero orar.
entregar todo o meu medo de avaliação. Toda a, a cobrança que no me, na minha autoavaliação é, Quero entregar o medo de ser avaliada pelo Senhor. E porque eu sei que eu sei quem eu sou, eu sei quem o Senhor me chama, me capacita. Então eu quero entregar diante dos meus irmãos, diante do Senhor, todo esse, esse medo de avaliação. Porque eu sei que é leve, eu sei que é construtivo, eu sei que o Senhor nos instrui, é um progresso, como a gente tem aprendido aqui, é leve. Então, que eu não venha ter medo de me autoavaliar, de, de errar, que eu sei que eu vou errar, de avaliar em nossas escolas. Eu sei que, que eu vou errar. Então, me livra mesmo dessa, desse meu perfeccionismo que me faz hoje trazer esse medo de avaliação. Mas eu te peço que o Senhor me ensine e me mostre que é leve. Que é leve. Então, eu deixo mesmo todos os traumas de avaliação para trás. E, e quero mesmo receber esse novo. Esse novo mesmo do Senhor sobre, sobre a avaliação. Então, muito obrigada. Muito obrigada pela revelação que o Senhor me dá. Muito obrigada pela vida dos meus irmãos. Em em compartilhar mesmo e mostrar que é leve e que é o Senhor quem, quem nos chama e nos capacita e é o Senhor que traz a sua maior avaliação nesse caminho amém Well, I tell you what, friends, why don't we go ahead and take a 10-minute break and process privately, you message a friend, you get something to drink and wash your face, <laughs> whatever you'd like to do. So, um, yeah, let's, can we, can we come back in 10 minutes? Is that okay? Vou colocar o timer. Voltamos então, gente. Deus abençoe e lembre, bora respirar, que hoje é dia disso. 